Ambassador, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Saddam's belief that only by possessing and being prepared to use the most devastating and indiscriminate weaponry available will he be able to retain his influence in this region, and that is what has brought his nation to its knees. But it's not simply a question of time catching up with Saddam. The world has changed, even if he has not, and those changes make Iraq even more of a threat. The mass murders committed by al-Qaeda terrorists in the United States on that terrible day in September 2001 showed the civilized nations of the world that they were facing an enemy that would stop at nothing to achieve their goals. On this basis alone, he represents a major threat to world peace. Yet he also strives to add a nuclear capacity to further strengthen his hand. Let us remember the annihilation of thousands of his own people using nerve agents, the hundreds of thousands who have died in the two wars that he has already started, and the millions who suffer daily thanks to his cold-hearted manipulation of the United Nations food programs. There is still time for this situation to be resolved peacefully through the United Nations, and we all fervently hope that that will be the case. But what is now abundantly clear is that the choice of what happens next rests in Baghdad with Saddam Hussein. We must remain firm in our resolve at this crucial stage to let Saddam Hussein know that the consequence of his refusing to abide by the will of the international community is military action. Uh, bridge the gap between your intentions are and the expectations of the Arab world. Well, as I indicated in the remarks I made a few moments ago, and as the Prime Minister has made absolutely clear, we recognize the very great sensitivity in the Arab world, particularly as far as the uh, current difficulties between Israel and the Palestinians are concerned. Uh, and we believe that there must be a determined effort by the international community to see progress, uh, to restore a peace process, ultimately to establishing a viable Palestinian state. Uh, and I, in my visits to the Arab world, uh, believe that that issue is of far greater concern in the Arab world than any uh, concern about Saddam Hussein. Indeed, my experience is that most of my Arab friends would be delighted to see the back of Saddam Hussein, but they also want to see a just and lasting peace in, uh, in the relations between Israel and Palestine. That is something which I cannot emphasize enough is central to the policy of the British government. Thank <laughs> you.